ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, wearing Negro con los colores de Mexico. He weighed in officially at 143, one quarter pounds. In his career, 36 fights, 34 victories, including 23 knockouts with only two defeats. From Thornton, Colorado, and the Mile High region of Denver, former light welterweight, champion of the world, Mike Mile High Alvarado. And fighting out of the red corner, wearing black with red and green. He officially weighed in at 141, one half pounds. His Hall of Fame credentials include 55 victories with 40 knockouts, seven defeats, and one draw. Thomas y Caballeros de Ciudad de Mexico, Distrito Federal, Mexico. El cuatro veces campeón del mundo, Juan Manuel Dinamita. Hip line to hip line. There it is. This is high right here. Hip line to hip line. 12 rounds. The WBO final eliminator. Touch him up. Good luck. Buena suerte. Marquez is the favorite in this fight because there's the justified sense that he's just a higher class of fighter than Alvarado. But those who like Alvarado like him not only because of his size and his age, but because of that X factor that he's always had in his game. The question is, does he still have it, or did Provodnikov beat it out of him? Round one begins. Crowd is lively. Arena seems pretty close to full. And Alvarado and Marquez begin sizing each other up at the center of the ring. By X factor, I mean Alvarado has usually been the tougher guy. And it's hard to imagine him beating Marquez without being the tougher guy tonight. Well, it's a lot like Tim Brad in a sense when you talk about the X factor because he's not really a big, big puncher. I think he's a little bit bigger puncher maybe than Brad at the weight, but he's not a huge puncher. So he has to do things on the fly like he did in the second uh, Rios fight. He makes changes at the right time. Sometimes he makes it a little too late, but he can make changes. Referee Pat Russell, you'll note, was the same referee who stopped the first fight between Brandon Rios and Mike Alvarado, a fight of the year candidate, in the sixth round and in Alvarado's view, too quickly. Tonight, in the dressing room before the fight, according to Steve Weisfeld, who was there and watched it, Alvarado once again brought the stoppage up to Russell and said, you know, you stopped it too quickly in my first fight against Rios. And Russell said, that was a 10-round fight. You get to go into deeper water tonight because this is a 12-round fight. Alvarado's being very smart here, taking his time, not really giving Marquez an opportunity to counter. He's, so he's, he's trying to make Marquez lead, right? Exactly, and that's how you do Marquez. You can't allow him the opportunity to fight his fight. If you give him a chance to counter, he's fighting his fight. And it seems like Mike Alvarado is trying to make him change that. And Marquez is the man who sold the tickets. Marquez is the man in this situation, by and large, who filled the seats. Is there pressure on him to make the fight? Uh, it is, but like uh, Max said, Alvarado is a heart-type guy. 
if it comes down to it, he doesn't mind laying his heart out there to try to get a win. Good right hand by Marquez. Left hook inside by Marquez. And a right hand by Alvarado as well. Over the top. Marquez has landed that right hand about three times this round already. Right hand by Alvarado to the ear of Marquez. Gennady Golovkin, Triple G, seated behind us, held a news conference here in Los Angeles today, and it was affirmed there by his promoter, Tom Loeffler, that they are looking very hard to put together a fight July 26th this year. The opponent they want is Australian Daniel Giel, and they're hoping to make an announcement sometime in the next couple weeks that Golovkin Giel will take place in July. Yeah, it is. And you saw the trademark Triple G smile. He shook him up. You've seen that, right? He's a little bit here. A lot in here. And then you shook him up, you heard him with those little shots. Deep breaths. Mouthpiece. We're mouthpiece. Copybox numbers in round one. We talked about Alvarado sitting back, trying to make Marquez lead, take him out of his counterpunching game. And what that led to is that Alvarado threw only 19 punches by copy box count in the first round, landing six. Marquez, 12 of 41. Which I think is smart on Alvarado's part because Marquez has the experience. He's the better guy as far as boxing level goes. So don't come out and show him your whole game plan right away because he has enough to go 25 rounds if he needs to. You don't have that experience to go 25 rounds with him. So don't show him too much too early. But Marquez can't, or excuse me, Alvarado can't go round after round throwing 19, 20 punches. He's going to have to let his hands go at some point if he wants to win rounds. Of course, he's already letting, letting him go more here than he did the first round. But the first round, you can't just go out and throw your whole game away. Well, Marquez also, he even did this to Pacquiao through long stretches of their rivalry. His reputation precedes him and it neutralizes often his opponent's offense before it gets started because as you guys have mentioned, he's such a great counter puncher, his opponents want to draw him out. And it makes them reticent to punch. It makes them hesitant to lead. And now Marquez indicates a willingness to get into more of the give and take. And we could wind up with an action fight similar to the kinds that Marquez had against Juan Diaz twice and Michael Katsidis. Marquez has always had that reputation as a counter puncher and he's earned it but has also always been a great action fighter if his opponent brings the fight to him and forces him to fight. And Al Mike, Alvarado landed a jab a moment ago. That's part of his game plan. And Mike will force him to fight at some point in this fight. You know that. Alvarado considering Marquez's skills has boxed well so far landing some clean shots upstairs in both these two rounds. Right hand by Marquez. Another right hand lands flush. Not enough to win the rounds, most likely, but he has hit Marquez. And Marquez remains at this point the busier fighter. And that would make it difficult, it would appear, for official judges to score a round for Alvarado so far. Very early on, round two of a scheduled 12. Sometimes also the taller fighter comes in thinking he has to fight at distance, the shorter fighter on the inside. But here we see Marquez out timing and outboxing Alvarado from distance. And at a certain point, Alvarado may decide that the inside is actually the best place for him. That was a good left body shot by Marquez. Right on the belt line. Oh, good answer. Left body shot by Alvarado. And the left hook that may have just barely grazed Marquez's chin. Indicating that if Alvarado can get a little bit closer and fire that left hook again, something might happen.
job with those responses, okay? Trabaja abajo, Juan, lo más que puede pegarle abajo. Cuando le mates abajo, lo sienten. Seated at ringside, a Mexican celebrity, two-time Academy Award-nominated screenwriter, Guillermo Arriaga. Dabble, 21 grams, and Juan Manuel Marquez's neighbor in Mexico City. Counter right hand by Marquez. Alvarado was coming in. Alvarado seems to be trying to push this into the later rounds and see if he can catch Marquez with a big shot to hurt Marquez possibly. Now we see Alvarado applying the pressure. He doesn't look like he's trying to outbox uh, Marquez. Looks like he wants to go in uh, like, like that right there. He's going for the gusto. Swinging right. for the fences. Sometimes what the body type tells you is not the way it plays out. And the taller, longer fighter has to try to impose himself physically on the inside against the smaller but more skillful fighter. That's exactly right. Good left hook by Alvarado there. More skillful and more experienced. Alvarado now beginning to let his hands go a lot more in round three. Marquez sneaking that body shot under Alvarado's left elbow. Marquez has done some beautiful body work tonight. We've seen it on both sides. And what Alvarado's posture tells me now when he goes into the to the defensive shell like that as he's walking forward is a recognition that I have to weather the storm to get inside and then unload the heavy artillery. And he has to be very smart in the way he chooses to attack. Good hard right hand by Al uh, Mar Marquez inside. Followed up with two or three more punches. Alvarado lands up the middle with the left two times. Marquez's power really hasn't seemed to bother Alvarado yet. He's hit him pretty flush a few times, but nothing seems to have happened. Headbutt, watch your hands. Headbutt, no cut. Headbutt, no You heard no Bat Russell warning both fighters to watch their heads. Said a little cut. I guess that's on Alvarado. I can't see it. Russell has already told ringside officials that it was a headbutt that caused the cut. Some big events in the weeks ahead, May 31 at 4 p.m. Eastern. It's the featherweight title fight between Simbiwi Bitgeka and Nonito Donaire, followed by the hugely anticipated rematch between Carl Frotch and George Groves. You see him right there, June 7 on HBO Pay-Per-View. Miguel Cotto challenges Sergio Martinez for the middleweight championship from New York's Madison Square Garden. And June 14, Ruslan Provodnikov makes the first defense of the 140-pound title belt he took away from Mike Alvarado. It'll be against undefeated Chris Algieri. Well, through three rounds, it remains a tactical fight. One well, well, man with more kids than a left hook to the head from a beautiful body shot on the right side. Howdy box numbers in round three. Marquez 20 out of 52. Alvarado 12 out of 34. Marquez still throwing more punches, letting his hands go more freely than Mike Alvarado. Harold Letterman, how do you have it through three? Okay, Jim. I got a three to nothing, 30 to 27. Juan Manuel Marquez. You know, Jim, I think Juan Manuel is just out fighting him so far. But what gets me is this. Look at Alvarado's defense. He's got those hands very, very high. You don't see guys keep their hands up that high unless they're protecting swollen eyes or cut eyes. 
And, and that may be the case here. I mean, Alvarado just seems like he's protecting his eyes by keeping his hands up high. If you look at his right eye, it's pretty, bad, it's pretty badly swollen. Anyway, three to nothing, one man will mark this. Alvarado got in the left hand to the body. I think Alvarado's defense is like that, to Harold's point. Mainly because when he tried to box and get out of the way of punches from distance, he couldn't do it. Hard right hand by Marquez. And, and, and this defense is a more primitive kind of, let me just pick off on the gloves and hands what I can on my way in. Solid left hook by Marquez as Alvarado was throwing. You saw the counter-punching skill. Yeah, Alvarado just missed with a really good right hand as well. Alvarado's got pop. He came back on greatest Prescott to stop him. Ooh, good right hand to the body by Marquez. <laughs> Marquez using his great timing in this round. He's catching Alvarado coming in. Alvarado going back to the jab now. Trying to work from outside against Juan Manuel Marquez. Hasn't done well when he's gotten in close. Well, he isn't, he isn't doing too much better outside either. I like the punches he lands when he's close, though. Right there, he gets hit and doesn't land anything. That's punch think, combination by Marquez. That's why I think it's better for him to be close to Marquez. At least he can hit and get, I mean, he can get hit and return the punch back. And Alvarado was a really good wrestler. He should know his way around the inside. I think he's better on the inside. <laughs> but he seems only intermittently eager to get inside and fight with Juan Manuel Marquez. Backing up much of the time and allowing Marquez to fight at whatever distance he wants to use. Like that. The hand speed and the combination skill of Juan Manuel Marquez starting to show up as we suggested it might. Class tells over time. Sit down. Sit down. Deep breaths. Okay. Breathe your house every round, okay? I need you to get busy. You need to start making him feel his age. Do you understand what I'm saying? Okay? Just put pressure on Hands up. Move your fucking head as you step in. One, two, one, two. Finish the hook. Finish with the body shots. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. The body shots are there. The uppercuts are there. Oh, freaking day when you won. Put this leg in the referee and break him up. More bully. Tim Bradley working the international television feed tonight, along with the Colonel Bob Sheridan and the great Larry Merchant, all three of them there together, and giving us a wave. Bradley, of course, well known to fans of Marquez. Copy box numbers through four rounds. Marquez, 80 of 198. Alvarado, 45 of 133. In the fourth round, Marquez stepped it up, landing 30 punches in the round. Juan Manuel Marquez is 40 years old, but as you like to say, Max Kellerman, he's located the fountain of youth in the past few years, and he's fighting with vigor again here tonight. And I also think that even if Alvarado hasn't been rocked yet by Marquez's power, the memory of Pacquiao getting put to sleep with one shot by Marquez is still fresh in people's minds, and I think the respect for Marquez's punching power is different now. Well, it has to be different now, but you also can feel the power when you see those hard body shots he's landing. The body shots are landing so hard that, I mean, it's rocking his whole body. So I know he knows that Marquez can punch just by the thunder in those body shots. The way he split the guard with that jab just now, Marquez split Alvarado's guard. He's developing a greater and greater sense of Alvarez's movement and timing. He's locating him a lot more frequently now. He's targeting the punches that he wants to land throwing them in combination. 
A brilliant display is developing here on the part of Juan Manuel Marquez. And Alvarez is fighting hard, fighting competitively, trying to stay with him, landing some good shots here and there. But look at those combinations. Yeah, each other. Beautiful look right. at him flowing. Right by the shot, right under that left hand just now. That slowed everything that he thought about doing down. But if Alvarado is going to lose, he should lose fighting the way he's fought to get him here. That's and now he's starting to do that. Yeah, he's got to sell out. He's got to be Mike Alvarado. Quit being tactical and fight. Yeah, because he's not going to win a technical match against this guy. 100%. And this is what we discussed off the top of the broadcast. Alvarado trying to box early, not meeting with success, and then doing this. And the more pressure Alvarado applies, the more opportunities Marquez will find to counter. Yes, it could hasten his demise, but at least it gives him chances. And like his corner said, you got to try to make the 40-year-old feel 40 years old. You can't do that by waiting on him. Well, you're not going to find out whether the 40 is a problem by standing and looking at him as Alvarado did in the first couple of rounds. You got to make him work. And now he's going after him that way. Momentarily thought of switching to a southpaw stance and then decided not to do it. Talking about Alvarado there. Another brilliant combination by Marquez. Alvarado got in a right hand, but Marquez landed at least a half dozen punches in the exchange. Lots of programming on tap to set the stage for the upcoming Miguel Cotto Sergio Martinez mega matchup. Immediately following the Stellican, stick around as Max Kellerman sits down with both Cotto and Martinez to look ahead to their June 7th showdown. One week from tonight, it's two days. Sergio Martinez delivering an all access look back at Martinez' last title defense in his hometown of Buenos Aires. At May 31, it's the premiere of episode one of our two part 24 7 Cotto Martinez. Join us for a behind-the-scenes look at both fighters as they prepare for the most anticipated event on the boxing calendar. In round five, Marquez was 41 of 85. That's 48%. He's putting on an increasingly brilliant display of combination punching. Alvarado, 19 out of 63. 28 of the 41 punches Marquez landed were power connects. I mentioned earlier, a way to beat a great old fighter is to find out how much he still really wants to fight. Problem Alvarado's finding as he moved the fight to the inside is the answer is Marquez still really wants to fight. Now what is Alvarado willing to do? Well, we know he wanted to fight when he said he wanted to win a welterweight title. He wanted to become a five-division world champion, and you know that gives him all the inspiration he needs to continue fighting. Alvarado has won fights from this position. If memory serves me correct, or correctly, I should say, he lost the first five rounds against Bradis Prescott, too. That's right. And came back to reel him in. And sometimes there is no answer for a guy. The other fighter's just better, and he's going to win no matter what he does. And that may be the case here. But we've seen Alvarado really impose himself in the past. And increasingly, he's going to have to try to do that here. But it goes without saying, Bradis Prescott is no Juan Manuel Marquez. <laughs> By far. Brilliant. Just amazing hand skills. Alvarado's, Alvarado's landed a couple of hard uppercuts, and Marquez is taking those punches very well. 
another hard right hand from Marquez. Crowd goes ooh and ah. Alvarado turned into a boxer against Rios and Provodnikov because he could, and he really couldn't stand in there with those two. And here you see him turning into the stalker against Marquez because he should. Even if he comes up short, he is a resourceful fighter. Marquez lighting Alvarado up, but Alvarado hanging in there and throwing bombs in return. Even though you got hit with some shots, that's what you got to do. See how you made the fans angry? He can't hang with you. He can't hang with you when you do that. Put your hands up. Deep breath. Deep breath. Give me another deep breath. Now I'm going to give you some water. He can't hang with you when you do that. You're the young man. Hands up. You're not going to get caught with a single shot. Yeah, right, with the right. Finish off with the body, eh? All right? One, two, three. Look at this. Sean Bilhauer, passionate in trying to say to Mike Alvarado, he can't hang you with you when you do that. Alvarado's face suggesting he doesn't necessarily agree. And you saw the graphic demonstrating that Marquez, by CompuBox count, has landed more punches in every single round so far. Harold Letterman, how do you have it halfway through? Six to nothing, 60 to 54, one man will Marquez. You know, Jim, Mike Alvarado is just giving up too many rounds. I mean, this is only a 12-round fight. Uh, he's got to start fighting soon, you know, like he did at the end of round six. But I got to tell you, Jim, I am going to quit Bally's tomorrow and join the Romanzi gym because one man will Marquez I don't know, he's doing something right. It's amazing, he gets those combinations out there, good hooks, I mean, he's fighting like a young guy. You'd, you'd never be able to tell he's 40 years old. He's just out fighting this guy. Six to nothing, Marquez. Well, he's got a young trainer, Nacho Berestein, who's only 74 and <laughs> still doing a whale of a job of training Marquez. Yesterday, we asked Nacho, where's the next Juan Manuel, Juan Manuel Marquez? And he said, I've got five or six of them in the Romanza gym right now. You're gonna be seeing him in the next couple of years. So Can't far, wait to see what Nacho will give us in the next 10 years. As Harold's scorecard indicates, this is a one-sided fight, but it's also a fight worthy of the legendary forum. One-sided, but increasingly crowd-pleasing. dangerous when he starts to get lit up. Well, he better hurry up and get dangerous. <laughs> uh, he, it, gonna, of course he's going to take more punishment this way, but at least he comes alive. Well, he needs to get dangerous kind of quickly here because those combinations right there are not good. Marquez's accuracy with three and four punch combinations is astonishing sometimes. Yes. Landing every shot on the button. Right on the button. With real punching power at his age, it's ridiculous. Well, the balance is good. The timing is good. The strength is there. The athletic skill remains. And he knows how to fight. As much as anyone alive, he knows how to fight. Mike Alvarado just got to let his hands go more. That's what Sean Bilhauer was trying to say to him, I think. It only Not happens when Marquez hits him a couple times.
Okay. Can you hold it? Can you do it? Can you do it? Can you it? Let that right hand go? That's the way this fight's gonna go right there. You need to fucking, both hands, let him go. If you're gonna get hit, you're gonna get hit. Let it go. You're the bloody guts warrior. Don't lose a decision because you ain't doing nothing. You understand what I'm saying? Okay? Both hands. Okay? You're not gonna get knocked out. He's walking through everything. We gotta cut him. He's, you're not even swelled a little bit. Both hands start doing what we trained to do. Beating this old man up. Okay? Every time you fucking punch, he feels you, dude. Deep breath. By CompuBox count, Marquez landed nearly 50% of his punches in the seventh round. And that's probably one of the reasons why Sean Bilhauer said, if you're going to get hit, you're going to get hit. Harold Letterman gave that round to Mike Alvarado. I disagree with Harold there. Rarely do, but I do there. Not sure I saw it either, but I don't score fights. Neither do I. Oh, good right hand by Marquez. Countering an Alvarado left hook. Right there, Jim. Mike should be throwing punches. Instead, he's waiting on Marquez to punch, and Marquez throwing three, four, five before he ever throws one. And before the Provodnikov fight, Roy, I think Alvarado would be throwing punches there. He always had in the past. It's very, it's got to be emotionally devastating for the tough guy to be out toughed in such a way that. When he's asked if he wants to continue, he says no at a certain point, which is what happened against Provodnikov. He needs to get his mojo back, and this is a very tough guy to do that against. If he could land one of those big shots, if he could land one of those roundhouse attempts, swinging for the fences, maybe it would change things. But so far, Juan Manuel Marquez has stayed in his rhythm and has fought the way he wanted to fight, just like that. Whenever Alvarado gets hit a good shot, that's when he comes alive with both hands. It's not until he really feels Marquez's power that he, he goes on the offensive, that the tough guy comes out in him, gets his bell rung a little. He is one tough character, I'll tell you that, because he's taking some hell of a punches tonight. And he's still trying with all that he has. Well, Alvarado's the naturally larger man. I mean, certainly if you had to feel that if anybody was equipped to move up to welterweight, it's more Alvarado, the career 140-pound guy, than Marquez, who was, for much of his career, a featherweight. And who, when he moved to welterweight to fight Floyd Mayweather, looked thoroughly impotent. But things have changed oh. in recent years for Marquez, and now he has that kind of power. And Pat Russell is counting. Alvarado's reaching for the rope. Seven. And he's going to get up. Hey, come here, hey, hey, come here. No. A tremendous counter shot by Juan Manuel Marquez. Put Alvarado down. Good. Deep breath. That's your shot. Now you are right. You know where you're at? Deep breath. Deep breath. Deep breath. Sit down. Deep breath.
chop a tree long enough, it will fall. He throw the jab, came right on the top with a right hand, beat Mike Alvarado to the punch. Mike was trying to throw a right hand too, and his counter was just a little too late. Right there, you see him go, trying to throw the right hand, but Marquez with the experience stays low and delivers the punch first. What a right hand. What a shot. Don Bilhauer asked his fighter, Mike Alvarado, between rounds, do you know where you are? And at first it appeared to me that the answer was, I'm not sure. But then Alvarado comes out with determination to begin the ninth round. And, and Marquez's power is expressed nowadays, not just running guys into shots, but he can go out and extend and find a fighter in the middle of the ring and drop him as he did with Pacquiao before the knockout. And here Mike Alvarado is the bigger man, and he still dropped him. Oh, there goes Marquez. And that's Mike Alvarado. That's what got him here. <laughs> now we're in the forum. Now we're going back to the history of this place. Now the crowd has what they came for. Both men have been down. We knew that Marquez would outclass Alvarado, but did Alvarado still have that in him? Apparently the answer is yes. And now Marquez wants to get it back. And that cut seems like he's bothering Alvarado under his left eye. Alvarado throwing home run uppercuts on the inside. Oh, good right here by Alvarado. Tremendous shots by Alvarado. He, he has got two more big punter punches. He is walking through hellfire to land those shots. Marquez hitting him with everything and the kitchen sink. And a fight has broken out. Cut widening under Alvarado's left eye. That's the story behind the story here as they fire away and trade shots in rounds eight and nine. Oh, another big right hand by Marquez. Look at these shots Alvarado's walking through. <laughs> He's going for broke with the hook when the right hand is really what set Marquez down. And what's so impressive about Alvarado's resilience here is that it's not that he's walking through the shots because he doesn't feel them. He's walking through the shots even though they're shaking them to his shoes. And his eyes really looking bad. It's swelling up on him now. Oh. Oh, my God. And he's throwing like that. them how spirited and courageous their man can be. See what I'm saying? If you want to fall in that room, you know yeah. It's going down. It's going to take a deep breath. Swallow this. Are you all right now? You're good. You're good. That's what he's saying. Both hands out. Just pick up the pace a little bit more. Everything's fine now. Okay? Everything's fine now. Need more now? Here you see Mike Alvarado on the attack. He gets caught with a good counter right hand by Marquez, but he stays with it, goes right of his own over the top, followed by hook, and that right hand right there landed right on the button and set Marquez down. Once again, that right hand right there caught Marquez trying to throw it up, and he beat Marquez to the punch this particular time. Watch Sean Billhauer's response. Yes. That was the reaction when Alvarado got the knockdown. Alvarado also hurt Marquez later in the round with a right hand, even though Marquez stayed up. And Alvarado was shook several times. Round 10 of a scheduled 12. Both men have been down in the eighth and the ninth. Alvarado was down in the eighth. Marquez, you saw, going down in the ninth. Harold, how do you have it with three rounds okay, to go? Chip. What an incredible fight. 
Seven rounds to two. 88, 82, one Manuel Marquez. You know, Jim, each fighter loses a point for the knockdown. So, Marquez gets, you know, it's a 10 8 round for Marquez in round eight, and a 10 8 round for Alvarado in round nine. They sort of offset each other. I thought that Alvarado did enough to win round seven. I thought that's when he started to come back. It's a great fight, and certainly Mike Alvarado with that power is still in the fight because he can score a knockout. But you have to have the heart to be there to land that power. And to me, Roy, that's the most impressive thing about Alvarado so far tonight. Yeah, he definitely has the heart of a champion. We knew that without a doubt. Uh, we never doubted that once. His biggest downfall has been his own, his own self, his own personal self, not his heart. His heart has never been an issue. Even when he lost the first fight to Brandon Rios, like you said, his heart still wanted to continue. He just got beat by a bigger man at that particular fighting style. A couple of weeks ago, Lucas Matisse and John Molina produced a knockdown dragout battle that is rated as the fight of the year so far. Not sure that this fight is going to turn out close enough to rival that one for fight of the year, but it has the intensity, it has the drama, it has the combat. You forget another uh, great knockdown. Alvarado knockdown for sure. We may have a contestant. These two guys don't look like they're done yet, do they? No, they don't. Again, it looks to me like Alvarado's not going to start going for broke until Marquez rings his bell. Yeah, but the next time his bell gets rung, it may be too late. <laughs> Crowd roaring with every punch now. I don't think Alvarado can help it. It's the way he's built. Hard right hand by Alvarado. When he a... feels he's threatened, when he feels he's in danger, that's when it comes out of him. Right there. Left hook by Marquez. Chopping right hand. Alvarado backing up after Marquez landed on the cut under his left eye. And there's something to be said about Marquez, too. Marquez doesn't mind sitting down and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the best of them. The big, strong, young care, guy. I wouldn't care who it is, he don't mind swapping licks to the mouth. By CompuBox count, 142 to 243. Alvarado only 68 out of 203, but Alvarado landed the right hand that put Marquez down in the ninth round. You heard Sean Bilhauer between rounds saying to Mike Alvarado, you know you need a knockout to win, right? You know that. I think Sean's told Mike the right thing throughout this fight. Once it became obvious he couldn't box with Marquez, he wanted him to move both hands. I think Bill Howard got him back into the fight I by telling him that he had to fight and there was no point in trying to box with Marquez anymore. All right, let's head out. Give us that break, now go. How many clinches in this fight? Lands for Alvarado. Like a double hook. A, a, an uppercut hook, it looks like. Yeah. Today. Very good combination. Oh, oh look, left, left uppercut for Marquez. My, right on the button. My goodness. Oh, 
right there is where Mike has to let his hands go. Yeah, he's got to get him. He's got to find a way to get Marquez to trade with him if he's going to have a chance to score the knockout he needs. Yeah, all the way he can. If he doesn't, unless Marquez do this, he'll never catch him. I really think Alvarado's defense works against him there. Marquez threw a double jab followed by a right hand. Alvarado blocked it, moved away. Had one of those shots landed, Alvarado would have come back with a combination. Good body shot with the left hand by Marquez. Right under Alvarado's right elbow. Body shots in the late rounds are like sacks in the fourth quarter in football. They win you fights. They sure do. He better quit waiting on Marquez because Marquez is throwing some really good punches at him. Like that. I'll also say no knockdown. No close. knockdown. We'll have to check the video to see if Marquez's glove touched the canvas. Close as it gets. It was close. If he didn't hit, land with that knockdown, we really have a problem with the scorecard. Maybe he really is 40 years old. <laughs> now he's just fighting a bigger man, Jim. I agree. A physically bigger and stronger guy. With something to prove. Now let's check the replay. We'll show it to you momentarily to try to figure out whether Marquez actually was victimized by a knockdown there. Pat Russell was right on top of it and ruled it not a knockdown. Faster. Respond. Yeah. This is the last round, son. This is the last round. He see Mike Alvarado land a right hand right on the button. And Marquez almost went down, but nothing touched the canvas. Therefore, the referee did the right job and not declared a knockdown. Terrific ruling by Pat Russell. He was in the right position, saw it clearly. There was no knockdown. Entering the final round. Marquez has big edges in CompuBox numbers. And a big edge in crowd support. That Alvarado has earned everyone's respect. That near knockdown was reminiscent of what happened at the end of the Bradley fight when Marquez seemed to stumble across or stumbled across the ring. Knows how to keep himself upright. Now Alvarado does switch to a southpaw stance. He's been thinking about it from round to round, and now he decides to do it. Comes back to the conventional stance. Well, after the way Marquez was able to time Pacquiao from that southpaw stance, I don't I think do I would it. try that. Yeah. Right hand is his best chance, talking about Alvarado. Without a doubt. All night long. That means shot. stay in the conventional stand. And when he gets caught like this, because he's waiting too long. Every time he waits, Marquez definitely is the most more experienced fighter. He's going to catch you every time if you just sit there and wait. And I think that right hand's bothering Alvarado. That's a big cut on the cheek. And Harold mentioned it earlier about Alvarado's defensive posture to protect his eyes. I think that's when he changes south pole when Marquez lands that big right hand. The no, he just yep, does there it right, is right again. There. He in the southpaw stance, trying to get the out eye out of harm's way. Well, when you turn a southpaw, your eye don't change size because his face is square on anyway. So whether he's left-handed or right-handed, the eye's still in the same position. Yeah, I think it's just his instincts that'll take over there. I can't say that because he's been doing that little thing all night long, since before he got the cut. He was changing the southpaw on the outside. He was going back right-handed before you attack. Right. So he's been doing that all night long. He's been creeping toward it all night long and all finally night. went ahead and did it. Like right there, he does it. And before something serious happens, he turns back out of it. 45 seconds to go. Does Alvarado have one more big shot? We almost had our first clinch. <laughs> <laughs> he 
He may as well go for broke, Jim. He don't have but like 10 seconds left. Marquez Gilding Lilly with a few more power shots. Alvarado waiting too much. Way too much. Didn't take command enough in the last two rounds to give himself the opportunity for the knockout he needed oh. to beat Juan Manuel Marquez. But what a fight. What a fight. Some cut under the left eye of Alvarado. Huge bruise. Big heart. Very big heart, but you also got to say big heart for Mark here. 40 years old, still willing to trade with the best of the best. He don't care who it is, what weight it is, whether he's a bigger man or a smaller man. It doesn't matter about the size of the heart around the body. I mean, the, the heart, the fight of the man is to I mean, the fight outside the man, is the fight that's inside the man. Harold. How did you have it? I'll get you. I had a 116, 110, nine rounds to three, one man will mark us. But I got to tell you, Jim, it's like I, wa I watched two different fights. The first six, all one man will mark us. From seven on, it became an out and out war with Mike Alvarado really fighting back and making a fight of it. So, nine rounds to three, 116, 110, one man will mark us. Take us through the three official judges who'll score the fight. Absolutely, Jim. Okay, Robert Barrett, that is a very strange call. The guy is basically a referee, but he's married to one of the best boxing judges in the world, Adelaide Bird. So, you know, he must know something about, about judging. The only fight we could find that he really did, big fight, was Cornelius K9 Budridge uh, TKO over, uh, uh, over Spinks. Thanks to Luca, very good judge from Preston, California. Had uh, Burbank divert ahead of Chris Ariola two weeks ago. Julie Letterman, the best judge in my family, had Floyd Mayweather, uh, 117, 111 uh, over Robert Guerrero. I like that score because all three officials had the same score. All right, and very quickly now, before we go to Michael Buffer, one more look at the knockdown of Mike Alvarado by Marquez in the eighth round. Tremendous right-hand shot. And returning the favor, another great right-hand shot by Alvarado to knock Marquez down in the ninth round. And now let's go to Michael Buffer for the official decision. Fabulous forum of Los Angeles. We go to the scorecards. The winner will be the mandatory number one challenger to the world title and the new WBO international champion in the welterweight division. Max DeLuca and Julie Letterman score it 117 109. Robert Bird has it 119 108. All three scorecards to the winner by unanimous decision. As we turn the page to another chapter in the story of a boxing legend from Mexico, Juan Manuel Dinamita Marquez wins the unanimous decision. Interestingly, Harold's scorecard 